Between the two, which one is better to drive for? Is it Uber Eats or is it Grubhub? Now, I asked you that question specifically because I think we all know that DoorDash is the number one market share leader in the food delivery space. And if you didn't know that, I just told you. Now, here's the thing. You need a backup. You need to multi-app driving on different apps at the same time so you can select the best order for you. But again, which one is the better one that you should really be paying attention to? One that you might want to favor even as a backup or even maybe a primary side hustle in your marketplace? Well, let's get into that in this video. So the judging criteria or standard criteria here were to compare the Order request screens for both apps, since you're going to be seeing that so whenever you're driving here, the pay structures, of course, with each respective app, any bonus pay and the frequency of bonus pay, which app is busier and then finally some problems. So let's take a look here firstly at these order request screens and these screenshots are taken really within the last couple of weeks here. So the most updated version of both apps, recent data here. So it's just randomly selected orders don't necessarily pay attention to the actual orders themselves here. So Uber Eats, of course, on the left and then Grubhub on the right. Okay, so a few standouts whenever I drive on these respective apps. Let's take a look here. I have a few criteria that we really want to pay attention to. So firstly, let's take a look at the duration of each trip. So we can see a difference here. Uber Eats on the left actually gives us a predicted duration of this entire pickup and drop off. In this case, 38 minutes. And then we do have the mileage prediction as well, 5.5 miles in this example. And then we have 3.9 miles on Grubhub, but we don't have a predicted duration of the entire route. Now, of course, you can see pay next to that. And then just going back to our main screen here, you see that, of course, on Uber Eats, that's 1652. Now, both of these requests, both apps are going to show you your payout, including the expected tip from the customer. But what if you don't want it? So what if you want to cancel either of these requests? Now, here is kind of an issue that I have. Let me know down below in the comments if you agree with this. But on Uber Eats on the left, we can see a cancel button. You know, you decline it, you ignore it, you don't want it, so you're going to decline it before you accept it. And again, there's a separate button for that. It makes it very easy. It's in the top right, completely away from the accept button, which is basically that green delivery button. Now, conversely, on Grubhub, we can see here, and I just commented this on a recent shift, but that reject button, it's very small. And consider, this is a blown up of a screenshot here. So imagine this just on your actual phone. But there's the accept offer button, of course, and then below that, the reject offer button. But imagine you're driving again, your phone, it should be in a phone holder. In my opinion, check out our team storefront down below for the best accessories really for any side hustle. But I don't love that. I would like to see Grubhub have a separate and far away reject button. Okay. Nextly, looking at the predicted route, just a visualization of where you're headed here. So Uber Eats on the left, of course, remember, we do see the mileage on both apps. Uber Eats gives us the entire predicted duration here, but we get an actual illustration of the predicted route. Now, you don't see that on the right on Grubhub, of course. So what I would do, it's a lot of this comes down to market research, is you need to understand that you get the mileage on Grubhub, but you're going to have to use some market knowledge of thinking, all right, where am I going? Where am I going to have to drive through? Is there tough traffic there? Versus, in my opinion, it's a little bit easier on Uber Eats. And then nextly, remember that accept button that I mentioned on Uber Eats. It's really you just click on this green delivery icon here. But what I'm showing you here is the countdown for you to actually accept this request. And another kind of pet peeve, in my opinion, a problem, in my opinion, between these two apps. So this green icon that says delivery on Uber Eats, it's actually going to slide down. It's going to basically decrease, showing you a visualization of how much time you have left to make a decision on this. Accept it or ignore it or decline it. Now, Again, on Grubhub, a problem for me, again, let me know down below if you agree with that as well, but there's no visual counter. 
In fact, there's no counter at all. There's no time counter that you'd get with a numeric countdown with a DoorDash, and there's no even visualization that you'd have on Uber Eats. Now, if you didn't know how much time you actually have to make a decision here, so this from Grubhub support is stating orders that are neither accepted nor rejected within approximately 90 seconds of being sent will disappear from your screen and will count as a rejected offer. Don't worry about that. If you decline it, ignore it, or actually click reject it, don't worry. You can't be penalized for that. Just make sure you're not accepting and then canceling. You can't do that too much or you will be deactivated. But again, 90 seconds here on Grubhub. Now, conversely, on Uber Eats, you can see here in most cases, the app will wait 15 to 30 seconds after it sends out a delivery request before it sends the delivery request to someone else. So a lot less time there, but at least you have that visual counter, that kind of image there of that delivery screen counting down. Okay, so now let's put the pay models head to head here. I'm gonna show you the breakdown of how they do this and then exact order request examples. So firstly here, the Grubhub pay model. We're not gonna go over all this. You can certainly pause the video if you want to watch more of this, but it is the mileage per order plus the time spent on the road plus customer tips, you do get 100% of tips on all of these apps really, plus special offers, any bonus pay equals your total pay. So now looking at Uber Eats, how fares are calculated, and I think you'll see a lot of overlap here. So standard delivery fare for each delivery, you earn amounts for pickup, drop off, time and distance, time and traffic delays, may be factored into your fare. And then there's multiple orders in addition to receiving the standard amounts for pickup and distance, a pickup fee multiplier may be applied depending on the distance between the restaurants. You'll also earn a drop-off fee for each order and then promotions much like Grubhub, any bonuses on Uber Eats. Take a look at this bonus here from Grubhub. This is literally from last August detailing a batched bonus. So you can see it completes six deliveries. I get $21 of a bonus there. But I do not see, at least here in Pittsburgh, many at all bonuses, whether it be the batched bonus like this, you got to complete a certain amount of deliveries and then you get the extra pay or per delivery bonuses, like get an extra $2 per delivery. I don't see much of that at all, at least here on Grubhub. Now, conversely, with Uber Eats, I see bonus pay all the time. So there's two different bonus pays, well, actually a little bit more than two, but primarily there is the surge pay, which is a per delivery bonus. We can see an example here of a heat map. It'll be, you know, based on your zone, $1.50, $2, $3 or more because of supply and demand imbalances. They have quest bonuses, which is like that Grubhub example I just showed you. You have to complete a certain amount of batched deliveries, you know, complete 10, complete 30, whatever it is, and then you get the bonus. Now there's also some multipliers in some areas with boost pay, and then there's also consecutive streak bonuses. So complete, let's say, three deliveries in a row consecutively, and then you get a bonus. And a big standout, in my opinion, and this actually, in my opinion, beats DoorDash even, is there's constant bonuses from what I've seen on Uber Eats, but they're stackable. So I could get the surge per delivery bonus because it's busy, I could be working towards a batched bonus called Quest on Uber Eats. And who knows, maybe I even have a consecutive streak bonus on top of that. Now let's talk about which app is busier. Now, the thing is with a lot of these apps is it is market dependent. Again, we're a team here. So consider joining a supportive community. You can talk with other drivers down below in the comments and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. But just talking from my experience, driving thousands of trips, transactions on really both of these apps and more, is I find that Uber Eats is more consistent. And you know I can go out there at different times of the day, of the week, and know that at least I'll get orders. But that might mean that I'll get a lower dollar orders, maybe a $3 request, a $4 request. So that's especially if it's slower. So I might have to decline more often. Versus on Grubhub, it might not be as busy, 
But I feel like just the low floor of the minimum pay is higher on Grubhub versus Uber Eats. Let me know if that's the case down below. But here's a big standout is I feel like, although slower, there is a chance that I might get significantly higher paying single orders on Grubhub. And speaking of pay, let's just touch on that pay breakdown quickly here. So an Uber Eats pay breakdown on the left, Grubhub, of course, again, on the right. So we can see things like, you know, the pay for the time on both apps. We can see the pay for the mileage here and any customer tips as well. We can see bonus pay with that surge pay on the left with Uber Eats here. So both apps do give you a full breakdown of how you're actually paid as a driver. So briefly, I already mentioned this a little bit here, but let's go over the problems in trying to decide which one's better for your marketplace, Uber Eats versus Grubhub. I talked about the reject button being kind of a pain on Grubhub, the lack of any kind of visual counter as well on Grubhub. And then, you know, maybe this, again, it might just not be as busy in your marketplace. So overall verdict, you know, which one, if I'm trying to add a second app or for whatever reason, you know, these are the ones that I'm trying to decide between which one would I go for? If your strategy is more on volume and you don't mind maybe declining more, really trying to look at orders, make sure that they make sense for you. And I feel like, especially if you're in a medium, at least marketplace, if you're in a very small marketplace, I think that's, let's say, Grubhub may hurt you even more than Uber Eats. But generally, I would go Uber Eats because of those things. It's going to be busier, probably more predictable pay, you get the more predictable bonuses, and then you have things like the countdown timer. Now, conversely, let's say your strategy was, I want to go a little slower. I don't necessarily want to get maybe rapid fire orders, you know, again, especially if you're in a larger marketplace. And I want to, I want to go again, a little bit slower at my own pace and maybe get again, the higher base pay, maybe the higher tips. Cause based on my numbers, I've seen higher customer tips on Grubhub. But if that's the case, you don't want to go as high volume necessarily. I would start with Grubhub as a backup app. So let me know your choice down below in the comments. Are you starting a side hustle with either Uber Eats or Grubhub? Is this going to be your first multi-apping choice? Again, driving on different apps at the same time to select the best order for you. So let us know down below where these apps fit in your side hustle portfolio. And if you want to see a video with the number one food delivery side hustle, DoorDash versus Uber Eats, definitely click the card above. And if you did get value in this video, would appreciate it if you drop a like on this video. And you can also click or tap screen here for my newest video, as well as a video recommended for you. And I'll see you in the next one.